Hey everyone, I'm Natalia and welcome back to my channel. Guys, if you guys missed the live stream that I had last earlier in the week, was it early in the week or last? Whenever that was, um, you guys missed it. What happened? I missed all you guys. I only got like a few people watching me, but I made um, a lot of good relationships with some of these people. I've had a conversation with everybody who's talking to me and I would like to thank you guys for actually coming because there could be more of those and for those of you guys who missed the live stream and are just now finding out about it, just put on my push notifications and then you guys will know when I stream next because who knows when's the next time I'm going to stream because I don't even know. And thank you for everybody who really did attend the stream. I had a great time. I was really talkative and I'm kind of like that a lot. I um, hope you guys don't mind. <laughs> but trailing off from that, the live stream actually gave me the idea to have today's video. So today's video is actually going to be reacting, which is normal, but this is going to be a different version of how I react. So this is from Kyle, and I had a nice conversation with Kyle while we were having the live stream. They recommended to me to talk, read uh, Amazon's Gummy Bear reviews, and I've heard of it like a long time ago, but I've heard about like how crazy they can be. I just don't know anything else about it. So he sent me a link too, so thank you Kyle uh, for recommending this to me. And if anybody else would like to recommend any types of videos that you would want me to react to or just do in general, that'd be great. I listen to you guys, I swear, even though I don't post very often on schedule, but it's okay. So let's actually get started with this video. I'll put the link underneath this video as well, just in case you guys want to read some more of it, maybe you find it really funny. I'm going to link it below. So Luke, this is the Haribo gummy candy, by the way. People are buying the Haribo gummy candy off of Amazon. Um, I don't know why they'd be complaining about it, but this is from 2015. They gave them one star out of five. Luke says, it was my last class of semester and the final exam was worth 30% of our grade. After a late night study session, I felt confident, but I had to decide between sleeping in or cooking breakfast. My eyelids shows sleep. My stomach later regretted this decision, and after several uncomfortable stomach growls, I finally decided to make a quick stop by campus bookstore and grab a snack before my test. Since the semester was ending and everyone was going home for the summer, a lot of items were on sale, including the snacks and candy that they left up front. Being in hungry state that I was in, it felt only logical to pick the largest, yet least expensive candy in order to get more bang for my buck. And there they sat, two bags of Haribo sugar-free gummy bears, buy one get one free. What a deal, I thought naively. <laughs> this is a story, guys. I would eat one bag before my test and one bag afterwards. As I walked to class, I gleefully chewed on those abdominal little bastards and unaware of the utter mayhem that they would soon unleash upon my poor, poor anus. <laughs> oh my god, all right, I'm in for it, so. I sat down on my desk as the professor informed us that due to issues with cheating in the past, restroom breaks would be prohibited until the completion of the test. I'll give you 10 minutes to use the restroom now. This will be your last chance. Any takers? Question mark. The demon bears hadn't released their unholy necromancy upon my stomach yet, so in my moment of ignorant foolishness, I remained seated, still munging on those miniature bear-shaped bombs. <laughs> After the students wise enough to take the professor's offer had returned, the professor handed out the test. I was six questions in when it happened. It started subtly at first, almost like a slight tingling sensation in my lower abdomen. I thought nothing of it, assuming my intestines were just going to do their thing. Little did I know that my intestines were trying desperately to warn me of the horror that was on the horizon. Guys, my question nine, it happened, but this time it was followed by a sharp pain, as if those infernal Hellions had orchestrated an attack upon my colon. I fought to contain the groan that tried escaping my lips. <laughs> it was at this point I began to panic. Something was going horribly wrong. I needed to get through, get through this test before it got any worse. My question 14, my worst fear was upon me. This same bears is burning hot, liquidy, dark magic crash against my anal sphincter like a tidal wave. Oh my god! I was 
able to close the hatch just in time, but those relentless toxic bears beat against it like gorks breaking down the door to Helm's Deep. I knew I wasn't going to- oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I knew I wouldn't be able to do so much as shift my seat without risking a breach. I fought, I kept fighting through my exam, clenching my cheeks with all my might, beads of sweat began rolling down my neck. Suddenly a loud gurgling war cry came from my mouth. <laughs> oh my god! And the entire class- oh my god, I lost my spot. Oh my gosh. And the entire class left in their heads. At this point, nothing mattered except expelling this ungodly presence from my house. Within 15 questions left, I prompted, wrote C for every answer, read out of the classroom. My professor yelled something, but I was too preoccupied with the volcanic eruption <laughs> that needed to take place before I could find sweet, sweet or only. I burst into the restaurant. <laughs> shone upon it as if it were a gift from God himself. It took me less than 0.5 seconds to undo my uncle, pull down my fist, and finally relax my beery buttocks upon the toilet seat. It took absolutely no effort to expel the demon. Almost immediately, the, flood, the floodgates of hell were opened in the day of liquefied souls of an entire bag's worth of gummy bears cried as they burned through my sphincter and into the watery abyss below. I had never felt such simu- sim <laughs> Oh my god, simulations. Oh my god, simultaneous relief and anguish in my life. After 30 more minutes of this, I immediately went home, dug a hole in my backyard, and burned the remaining bag of gummy bears. I leave with this. Do not, I repeat, do not eat these spawns of Satan. Not only did they cause me to fail my final test, but the anguish I experienced is something I wouldn't wish upon anyone, not even my worst enemy. The only place these godforsaken hell bears belong are buried deep below the earth's surface. Oh my freaking god, that was a roller coaster. Oh my god, I, I'm so sorry. I was like, I couldn't help but laugh. I'm so, Luke, Luke, I'm so, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Oh my god, uh, I've never had the sugar free ones, but I, th I will never have the sugar free ones. This is a very, very helpful review for me. I'm so sorry, Luke, that you had to endure this type of pain. I would have dug a hole in the backyard and put myself in it at that point. I, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. But Mickey, this is actually a good review. Um, these are yummy, soft, and extremely delicious. You get a lot for your money and it's well worth it. Perhaps best not to eat too many at one time, however. It's all up to the individual that decides when it's enough is enough. Also, during my taste test, I'm not sure what my bowel shot out of me, but somehow I can now do arithmetic again. Thanks, Harrow. Well, that sounds like a uh, whole experience. This was in 2018, by the way. I just want to go back to, uh, to Luke's. Um, he did not buy it from Amazon. He just wanted to review it. Um, let's go to the next one. Happy Cola, happy customers is a four star. Recently, I experienced terrible loss of my family. I just added words. Um, I'm so sorry. This is in 2019. Eating can be a consequence of a sad event as in it seemingly makes you feel better emotionally. However, I also felt fine physically. I did not experience diarrhea like Jeffrey's airport experience in 2013. I haven't read that yet. I enjoy the five pound bag all myself. Although it took me about five months to eat it, I have IBD. So if anyone's stomach bowels would give way like the Hoover Dam busting apart, it would probably be me. I experienced no such misfortune and of starting my second five pound bag, I usually never write reviews. I did want to pass along my thoughts on Jeffrey's harrowing airport experience. If he's not a writer, he should become one. I never laughed so hard in almost a year, albeit 
At this unfortunate turn of events with illness and subsequent misflights, kudos, Jeffrey, and always keep a stiff upper lip and butt. I want to read Jeffrey's. <laughs> All right, guys, I have hit Jeffrey's. I think this one is going to be the last one just because this is very long. So we're going to read Jeffrey's since this is a book. Jeffrey Lambert in 2016. Actually, this is not Jeffrey Lambert. This is Okay, yeah, this is the one though. Um, give one star out of five. Hell holds no surprises for me anymore. That is what he comes with. This is his story. This is a cautionary tale, and unlike most of the other reviews on this product, this is a true story, and its authenticity can be qualified by a small news item that appeared in a Toronto Star's local news section during the month of April 2013, much to my Chagrin. I would consider myself a prudent man, not given to bouts of unspokenness or craving attention, and certainly not one to rock the boat. On any given day, I can be found reading a crime novel on a park bench in the middle of the city, soaking in the opulence of nature while nibbling on my tuna fish sandwiches and fending off ferocious gulls and squirrels that threaten to spoil my repose. This is me, law-abiding and introspective, which is why it came to me it came as a shock to me to find myself incarcerated because of the devil's confectionery, Satan's sweet meat, Lucifer's lozenges, the horror that is known as Haribo sugar-free gummy bears. I hadn't eaten since lunch and I was feeling a bit hungry, my stomach rumbling loudly, which caused me to look around at the other travelers rushing past me in the busy terminal, fortified that my bodily noises might be heard by others. I briskly checked my watch and decided that I had enough time to grab a quick snack before going through the baggage check and security, and which get something more substantial once I checked through security. And I scanned the colorful array of perfection, quickly coming to the rest on the tantalizing rainbow colored bag of gummy bears with the simple white and red logo, Arabo, emblazoned across the bag in which, in what appeared to be a slightly tweaked Helvetica rounded font. Now, I'd have to pause here in the story for a moment to underscore the importance of making proper choices. I was hungry. When you're hungry, you shouldn't eat food. Food is defined as a nutritious substance that people consume to maintain life. This is what food is. Haribo sugar-free gummy bears, end quote, are not food. These aren't even from this planet. I imagine their origins being conceived in a board room in hell by a top team of creative pain administrators with senior level demons rubbing their hands together in ghoulish delight as hell's, uh, hell's chief chemist slowly lifts the bot the veal on their new creation they tasted fine just like the other manufacturers brand of the colorful candy they were sugar free to boot this is what made the whole incident that followed so baffling if they had tasted off or different I most likely wouldn't have continued to shovel them into my mouth absentmindedly while daydreaming about what I ordered to eat from room service in my hotel in Amsterdam. At this point, I had my boarding pass printed and rubbing my stomach a little, I proceeded to security. I briefly entertained the thought of trying to find a restroom before going through security, but at this point my discomfort was manageable and I didn't think it could get any worse. Certainly not within the amount of time it took to clear, take to clear security. I joined the line and started fishing for my passport to present the agent checking tickets. I felt a thin sheen of sweat break out of my forehead and underarms, and my features flushed for a moment as a wave of heat washed over me. I didn't pay it much heed as going through security always caused me great anxiety and I chalked it up to pre-flight jitters. It was only as I stood face to face with the agent and handed her my passport and ticket that I had a glimpse of the agony that was about to begin. <laughs> It felt like time rippled for a moment as if my consciousness buckled. So intense was the pain that fired through my bowels. I grimaced spastically and emitted a low moan. I felt myself take an involuntary step sideways. Stars shot through my head briefly and my vision blurred and, my and then snapped back into focus. As I fumbled off my belt to go through the metal detector, a piece of my stomach increased increased and I practically had to sit on the floor to take my shoes off, terrified of what would happen if I bent at the middle to do it. I was becoming increasingly more evident to me that this wasn't just a stomach ache. No, 
This was something much worse. It gave me temporary amnesia and it took all of my willpower, all of it, to clench my butt cheeks together <laughs> to prevent my sphincter from exploding. A sudden shock of pain racked my body and I half wondered if I was going to give birth to a Tasmanian devil. The crazy, fever-induced image of said cartoon animal chasing Bugs Bunny through this flashy volcanic shit kettle. That was my stomach caused me to elicit a short <laughs> bark of laughter as I approached the metal detector. A wild, distant look into my eyes, sweat now beginning to pour off of my like a long distance runner in Kenya. The security agent on the other side of the detector shot a quick glance over to the coworker who narrowed his eyes and made a subtle movement towards his holster. Towards the agent for a pat down, my stomach began to elicit sounds that can only be described as otherworldly. <laughs> Bubbling sound heard from afar and grew in pitch and intensity at an alarming rate. My jaw dropped, shocked, and shocked as of what I can only describe as a sound of agonizing wailing alley cat in heat with a persistent Doppler effect added to its voice emitted from some nether region of my intestines. The officer's eyes widened in alarm and she kept her eyes glued to my stomach as she thoroughly patted me down. As she reached my shins, I felt my innards suddenly expand. I plummeted towards my rectum. My, with cat-like reflexes, I squeezed my sphincter shut with what seemed like nanoseconds to spare. I, I, knew, I knew that if I didn't get to the bathroom immediately, I would shit myself. Oh my gosh. With a Herculean effort and all my strength that I can muster, I forced my butt cheeks together knowing that one false move would open the floodgates. I began to walk like a duck, trying to remain as inconspicuous as possible, not even caring now what other people were seeing in front of them. <laughs> Disheveled, barefooted, 40-year-old businessman, red-faced and bulgy eyes, sighing profusely, shaking slightly, and walking without bending his knees. With single-minded intensity, I grabbed my carry-on shoes and socks from out of the plastic tub and had past the x-ray inspection without putting anything back on i turned on my heels with the intention of finding the nearest restroom and slowly dying there one squirt at a time i turned to go and found myself staring at three armed agents who stopped me and asked if i would follow them why what's the matter i stammered wincing slightly as the acts of speech seemed to strange the, the tenuous and extremely fragile truce i had negotiated between my bowels and the tempest that raged within I have to go to the bathroom right now, I pleaded. Just follow us, please, they said, leaving no room for argument. The other travelers, clearing the security check, stared with curiosity and revulsion at the spectacle unfolding before them. The room they brought me into was an examination room. I had pretty much stopped registering details of my environment as my conscious closed off all but the absolutely necessary functions, breathing ability to walk, but I snapped back into reality when I heard the snap of rubber. Sir, we are going to perform a cavity search on you! Are you kidding? With one foot hovering over the edge, and then without taking a step, I found myself plummeting. With a sound like an extra large plastic ketchup bottle being run over by a Mack truck, my sphincter released. <laughs> The pressure of the blast pushed me hard into the desk and the legs of my bed screeched as it scraped across the floor. My body remained frigid for a moment and I experienced a relief that can only be described as orgasmic in its purity. My eyes rolled back in my head and my tongue lolled out of my head like a half-retarded dog and I emitted a low, sustained groan that grew in pitch as the filthy torrent pushed its way out of my body. Tremors wrecked my body. I must have looked like a fish out of water with an endless stream of shit firing out of its ass. Other sounds of sensation started to filter in now as my consciousness began to materialize. My omnipresent sound of chunky liquid spattering against a hard surface with great force, the high-pitched screaming of a woman's voice calling out to God, another <laughs> voice sobbing uncontrollably and poorly to make it stop, <laughs> and my own ecstatic monotone wail. <laughs> when my ordeal had eventually run its course, I was left panting for a long Wobbly legs, half crying, half laughing with relief. 
fairly lucid and feeling as if I had birth an elephant. My colon felt like, <laughs> like someone had poured chili sauce all over it and then sent in a colony of fire ants to eat it through my sobs. I heard the sound of dripping like when the sprinklers are eventually turned off. Me, the sobbing continued. I heard someone try to speak in some walkie talkie, but nonsensical <laughs> words were all that the man could speak. <laughs> it sounded like a ravings of a lunatic. I slowly turned my head to survey the devastation in, in that instant. If I had had a pencil or some other sharp object, I probably would have gouged my eyes out in revulsion. The smell, the smell was enough to drive a man insane. It was a stench of rotting potatoes mixed with sulfur and ammonia cooked in broth of chicken feces and left to age for two weeks in yeasty stew at the bottom of a French outhouse. After half a whiff of this ghoulish brine, I immediately stopped breathing through my nose, and but the taste was to remain in the back of my throat for months to come. The young agent had taken the brunt of the foul witch's brew, and at, at first I couldn't process what I was seeing. I thought somehow the young blonde bull kid had been screwed away and replaced by a brown golem, or an ATV that had spent the better day of better part of the day driving through every mud puddle he could find after a torrential downpour. I spent a week or so in the hospital and closed. I had apparently expelled every available drop of water from my body that was possible to sustain life without for a short period of time. All my clothes were incinerated in the hospital's crematorium and the soiled bag of horrible free gummy bears was never recovered. This is my story. It is inconceivable to think that this kind of product can be so legally hidden <laughs> as food. I was lucky I survived, but as for the families of survivors and the survivors themselves, they will forever live with the trauma of the events that took place at the Pearson International Airport on a snowy day in April 2013. Oh my god. describe how fucking long that was but on top of that how much of a shit show that was i can't even like begin to describe how i feel about what i just read i have to stand up because of how how i feel about what i just read this man stared satan in the damn face <laughs> I already know, like everybody, I'm sure everybody knows how it feels when you're about to just, like you feel like you can't hold anything. I couldn't imagine the embarrassment, the agony of what that man felt. Oh my goodness, I hope that man is doing so much better now. To those people who are in that room, why did you want to do that? Like, I know he looked kind of shifty, but <laughs> this man, basically died. <laughs> he literally saw death itself. <laughs> I was like, thank you to Kyle for recommending all this to me because this was the best thing I have ever read in my life. I just wanted to say, this man is so poetic. I just, he needs to write a book about his experience. That was a nice, a nice book. That actually was, this video actually would be a lot longer if I kept everything in. I'm gonna cut out pieces of it, but Guys, with that, thank you so much, Kyle, for recommending this to me. I appreciate you so much. I This is the best. Step. Oh my God, I'm just so thankful for that. But guys, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys learned something. Don't eat sugar-free Arabo gummy bears unless you really want to shit your brains out. But guys, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, go down below, spread some love in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. I post every single Friday, so uh, hit me up. <laughs> Turn on push notifications just so you get stuff like this, so you guys know I'm live, stuff like that. And guys, just have a beautiful day. Just, just be careful what you eat. Candy's not food. I say this all the time to my friends. Candy is not food. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I'll, I'll see you later. See ya. Bye. <laughs> this shit literally was insane. Crazy man.